Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Did anybody go outside with a short sleeve shirt? What a gorgeous day. Shorts? Oh my goodness. So, so Chris and I were just on, on the ski trail, and uh, we're about to ski, and we, we run into Linda Foytz. I mean, she does this every day, practically, she says, you know, and uh, it was just gorgeous outside. I, I, what a contrast from last week, huh? Yeah. But, you know, we are blessed. Think about the weather we get in Wisconsin. I know that sounds strange, but think of, think of all the stuff going on all throughout the country and the storms that kind of sweep by. And, yeah, we get snow once in a while, an occasional tornado, but, uh, you know, we are, we are blessed. Um, hey, if I'm a little wired today, um, this, this morning I was making um, coffee. I had a little too much coffee. Chris and I were able to get away, and I wanted to see what it would be like to be Jane Christensen and have Starbucks coffee all morning. Oh, my goodness. So if you need to, you can just go like this and say, slow down if I get going on my sermon too fast, okay? All right, very good. Please stand as you are able, and let's join in Lord of all hopefulness. Take it away, boss. that we are to do diminishing lights. As we prepare for Christmas, we typically light a new candle each Sunday. But as we prepare for Good Friday, we extinguish a candle each Saturday or Sunday to remind us of the approaching darkness of betrayal and death. During this time of Lenten preparation, we think of those who turned away from the light of Jesus. And we remember that we too turn away. Jesus healed many who were sick in mind, body, and spirit. Only a few returned to give thanks. We realize that we have taken the gifts of God for granted, that our lives have lacked gratitude. Our lack of gratitude shields the light of Christ from us and others. 
We extinguish the first candle, confessing our own failure to God, to give thanks to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, again we thank you for gathering us here in your name. We thank you for the gift of today, the warmth and bright sunshine, so many good gifts, and even for the breath of life. Lord, oftentimes we do not share that gratitude. Oftentimes we neglect to say thank you. Lord, draw us to you today, that we may learn from you. As we walk with you, Jesus, in the scriptures today, that we would take heart to the hospitality that you demonstrate through the parable and through the actions of Mary. Lord, now we come to you as your people, confessing our brokenness, confessing our sins, confessing our weariness in the silence of our hearts. Thank you again, Lord, for listening to us. Your attentive listening matters. Lord, restore us, renew us, refresh us, so that we may walk with you and delight in you and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. All right, so sometimes it's just great to read the scripture, right from the scripture. Other times it's really helpful to see... uh, a a depiction, a drama of what it may have been like or even the image that Jesus had when he spoke parables, when he was with Mary and Martha, his dear friends, or when he spoke to the lawyer. So today we're going to start with um, watching the scripture uh, through video form. That's you, Kathy. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise.
As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So hospitality, that's the word I want you to stick in your head is hospitality, okay? Now, if you look up hospitality in the dictionary, it's actually a noun, and it says it's the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or stranger. But I like to say that hospitality is a verb because it's action, just like love is, is a verb. So I'd like to suggest today that these characteristics of the verb hospitality demonstrated in Jesus' actions and teachings are critical today. So hospitality is about listening, caring, or another word that is used even in the text is compassion, and ultimately generosity. So if you recall, the moment when Mary was looking attentively at Jesus, it said that she was listening. Okay, that's what the scripture says. Her total focus was on him. And listening is action. How did she act? Well, I suppose she asked him questions. Her hospitality was in the form of caring through listening well. Which, if you haven't picked up on already, that is our theme this year during Lent. One of our devotionals touches upon that well. And that's a skill or art that is actually being lost these days. With all our devices and all our distractions, how often do we really sit still and listen to the person near or right in front of us? Chris and I were able to do that today. We had some time together, no kids, no dogs saying I had to pee right now. And it was beautiful. And there was times of pure quiet but we could focus on listening to the other. Martha, she meant well. She desired to care and serve Jesus by providing food. That's probably a gift of hers. And as we all know, that's a beautiful gesture. When somebody cooks or bakes for us, or takes us out to eat and foots the bill. I always love that one. But did you notice what Jesus said to Martha? He pointed out how she worries about many things. And that Mary chose to do what was better, at least in that very moment? Yes, our care is best when we are simply present with someone and we listen well to what they have to share. The Good Samaritan parable convicts me every time. I mean, how often in life do I, maybe possibly even you, walk by somebody in need? I know more than we care to say. Nonetheless, this is what I want us to focus on. How did the Samaritan care for the Jewish man beaten up alongside the road? First, he may have heard his cry of pain from afar. He may not have. Then he saw him there, and immediately he went to action. I don't think he hesitated. He treated the wound, carried him, put him on a donkey, and took him to a place to stay. He was practically an EMT. How was the Samaritan generous? Well, consider the time it took for him to do all this caring. He was generous in his time. He treated the wound. The Boy Scout had a talent, or at least a skill. And thirdly, he shelled out some coin. You saw that coin. Paying the innkeeper handsomely. 
and saying he'd pay more if there's any other costs. Then I'd like us now to see um, a different version of Jesus having a conversation with a lawyer. This is a little different incident. But what I'd like you to understand is, is the concept of, of how serious it is to live this out and how Jesus um, calls people to completely give everything. Here's a little different version um, of uh, Jesus' encounter with a lawyer. Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Which? Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All these things I have kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? One thing thou lackest. Thou wilt be perfect. Go, and so that thou hast. And give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, and follow me. Verily I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Who then can be saved? With man this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So I contrast that. Here you've got a rich one, young ruler. He is really a godly man. He's obedient. He's doing what he can to honor the Lord in his life. And then Jesus challenges him to give it all. Give it all. When you, when you see that and you put that up against the Good Samaritan, what the Good Samaritan did is doable. It's doable. We could do that. Now, there's so much more underneath there because a good Samaritan loved somebody who likely did not love him, right? He was a Jew, and Jews and Samaritans typically don't like each other. Particularly, Jews don't like Samaritans because they're a mixed breed. They're written off, okay? So he loved somebody that typically would hate him. But he, he, he did what was right in God's eyes. The rich... The young ruler, well, he, know, he knew it was going to be a complete stretch for him, and he walked away, I'm sure, just disheartened, because that would be, like, for him, impossible. So I want us to be think of, this is possible. We can do this. We can live this hospitality out and care for those, even for those who we may typically not care for. I'm going to do a little shift. One of my favorite commercial lines is this. Let's sing it together. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Practice that when you go home, okay? Because I think I just slaughtered it. But, um, but I really want you to think about this. I love this line, and I've got somebody who works for State, uh, State Farm, been talking to him lately and stuff, and I can't help but just go to that commercial. 
But what if they said that about St. Olaf? Like a good neighbor, St. Olaf is there, right? You know? Um, so you, to speak on that, this is off the script. Um, we were delivering soup yesterday and stuff, and I went to a neighbor, literally a neighbor, kind of kitty corner, uh, lives next to, to Jim and Paula, and uh, he's 31 or so, and um, his mom had a stroke. And I heard that, and uh, they said, hey, bring some soup over. He was thrilled. In fact, I gave him more, and he said, oh, thank you so much. I'll have that for lunch and everything. But it, it was perfect. And he knows St. Olaf. He says, oh, man, I really miss that, uh, that beer and wine event you have. <laughs> and he said, what about that chicken dinner deal? Oh, you mean the, the, the bluegrass festival? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, but here, here it is, you know, this young man, he might not show up to worship, right? But he sees us as a good neighbor. So I think that's powerful. If people can see that we care for them, whether they're in Hartford or other places, but that's that hospitality reputation that, that we want to have in Jesus' name. It's not so much about St. Olaf, but it does identify a community, right? Well, if you didn't realize this already, this is the next slide. Um, hospitality is one of our core values. In fact, it's called authentic hospitality, meaning it's real. It's, it's not just assumed, like we stand at the door and go, okay, somebody's got to you know, shake your hand. That's the assumed greeter, right? No, but it's genuine in nature. It's coming from the heart. So this is how we've defined it in, in our way of creating core values. First of all, it's based off of Romans 15, 7. So Romans writes, Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. And so authentic hospitality expresses God's invitation to welcome, receive, and care, not only those we know, but also for the stranger and guest. This is so all may know that God in Christ values and loves them. And then we define it further. Authentic hospitality makes people feel at home in our presence and invites a sense of belonging. We are called to be disciples, sent out by Christ and going out of our way, even when uncomfortable or inconvenient. Sounds like the Good Samaritan. God uses our relationships with others to expand his kingdom and receive new lives in Christ. Another core value for St. Olaf is contagious generosity. So, again, John 3.16. Anybody know that verse? Can you say it by heart? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believeth in him should... Oh, you guys are good. You guys are good. So as God so loved the world that he gave his son so that we may have an abundant life, so we give generously to bless God and others. Generosity is contagious and inspires others to do acts of kindness. I think of it this way, that the kind of generosity that we live out multiplies or even having the compounding effect like uh, people's investments, right? Over time, it continues to reverberate and it multiplies and grows even more. It's contagious and spreads like a virus everywhere. Okay, that was not the best reference these days. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and then finally, you got compassionate service. And the compassion means it comes from the gut. It's a heart or gut-wrenching care that is greatly concerned for another's well-being. The scriptures from Matthew 25 says, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So compassionate service is actively caring about the needs of others. Therefore, the Holy Spirit prompts us to joyfully do God's work, helping our neighbors in our communities both near and far. In fact, if you read the devotional the other day from uh, Outreach for Hope, did you hear about St. Olaf? Yeah, so, so Steve and St. Olaf was in there about our ministry downtown with, uh, with the produce we send downtown. If you're not getting those, let me know. It's really cool because they're written and in video, so you get to see the people and see, hear them testify. Beautiful devotions. So compassionate service happens when God calls us into the world together, especially as we step into greater uncertainty, discomfort, resistance, or sacrifice. That is, when we serve outside of our comfort zone. 
okay? We may discover unexpected opportunities to transform the lives of individuals, families, communities, and the world through Jesus. So do you hear all that language that these core values use that truly illustrate what Jesus was getting at, particularly with the Good Samaritan parable? Again, our challenge as we walk through Lent, as we journey to the cross, as we follow Jesus, as we call ourselves Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, and many followed him, And many might have said they were followers, but then eventually they turned away and they went back to the realities of life and no longer followed Jesus. But if we do that, if we follow Jesus, we will exude authentic hospitality like Mary and the Good Samaritan. We will extend contagious generosity when given the opportunity to bless. And we will live out a life of compassionate service that is willing to sacrifice and give its best in someone's time of need. That's who we are. So in a world where hatred abounds, neglect, harsh words, and road rage runs high, let's be different. Let's be holy. Let's be set apart, a light in the darkness, a people spilling forth with hospitality, shown by listening and caring and generous actions. In whose name? In Jesus' name. Amen. So going to that parable of the Good Samaritan, and uh, those of you doing Bethel, what is the theme of chapter 4 of Genesis? Chapter 4 of Genesis. This is a tough one because it's not a natural one. Brother's Keeper. All right. So we're going to sing Hold This Together, and if you are so moved, please stand. It don't have a job. Don't pay your bills. Won't buy you a
gonna be alright And love will hold us together Make us a shelter to weather the storm And I'll be my brother's keeper So the whole world will know that we're not alone Let us join together. Um, confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was, he was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Dear Lord, in Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction, especially the people, livestock, and wildlife affected by the extreme cold in the south. Bring supplies and assistance to all in distress. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Your paths are filled with steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the disadvantaged. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially those who are ill with COVID-19 or are suffering the effects of isolation and addiction. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our faith and teach us to live boldly in service for others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, especially our soup troop and food ministry. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of life, bring your peace healing, and renewal to those families and friends listed in our bulletin or on the screen. Read no. with me, Noah, Noah William, William, Harriet, Harriet Jenna, Jenna, Herb Hack, Hack Dick, Dick, Lynn, Lynn Jody, Jody Wells, Wells, Tom Christopherson, Marlene, Marlene Linda, Linda Frederick, Frederick Sheila K., Kay, and Kathy Cynthia. L., and also the family and friends of Scott Hefty mourning his death. For those and for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness 
and who have given us examples of the joy of life in harmony with you and your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The disciples that were twelve, who were called and followed him for three years, broke bread together in the upper room. And as Jesus did this, he said, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup and gave thanks, gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Take your wafer. You know, I, I can't help, but I got to eat some of this bread. This is just, you, you just can't waste this. So thanks, man. Um, you can get yours ready. Sorry, got the good stuff. Body, I the bread too. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you may be seated. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you to do so, but when June sits, everybody else can sit, okay? Sorry, I just had to say it. You were right there, you know. Um, Hey, I got a special memo sent to me fresh today from the council president, and this is a big deal, so mark your calendars, all right? Special congregational meeting, Sunday, March 7th, 10 a.m. says, please mark your calendars and plan to attend, either in person or on Zoom, or we'll find a way. This special congregational meeting to hear and discuss plans of improving our West Lawn area with a patio pavilion and sign, digital sign. Members of the council and property team will present details of each item, how we envision they will enhance our ministry efforts and financing options. A congregational vote will then be taken to determine if we proceed. Does that council president want to say anything more? Okay, all right. Well, so we're going to discuss what's happening as we go out these doors and we go out to an empty lawn and um, how we can use that area for ministry and improve it. And then there's also been over the years um, an interest in having a sign that would be able to um, express and tell the community what we are doing here. So... We'll be bringing that, those plans to the congregation on the 7th. If you have questions, um, you know, come with them. We'll discuss it, get all our concerns out, and then we'll make a decision as to whether we proceed with that. Um, we'd like, to, if we do decide to go ahead, we'd like to get it done as soon as possible this spring so we can use it for the summer. And Good that's reinforcement. It. That sounds just like the council president wrote. It? Yeah, it's excellent. Um, just so you know, uh, guess what week this week was? What do we do on Friday? Soup. You are brilliant, and it is cheesy potato with all sorts of good stuff in it. And we have more jars and stuff, so if you want to take one home or share it with somebody, we have some boxes of food handy and some soda bread. So please join in the fun. Anybody else have anything else to mention? If you do, please stand. See, nobody stand. Oh, you're going to share something. I mean, I just said that, and he does. He just, oh, he's so responsive. Well, let's just do it. (laughs) I love it. You're turning red. Please stand, and we'll join in. We are called.
kingdom to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one and kindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Sing, sing a new song. Sing of the great day when all will be one. God will reign and we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. As we are sent into the world to bear witness to our faith, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.